Have you ever competed in a competition and came in second? How do you feel if a thousand people are lining up behind only one person? Such is exactly the situation with Blue Origin now. Somehow Blue Origin realizes that the BE-4 engine is better than others, but there's no way to beat SpaceX. Let's find out everything about this subject in today's episode of Alpha Tech. For many people, a rocket engine is just a rocket engine. But Blue Origin's new engine is a big deal for a number of reasons, not the least of which is its 550,000 pounds of thrust at sea level, much more powerful than a space shuttle main engine, the RS-25, which was 418,000 pounds of thrust. Especially as Jeff Bezos explained the philosophy behind the BE-4 engine, in principle, rocket engines are simple, but that's the last place rocket engines are ever simple. Nonetheless, Blue Origin sought to make an engine that was not too complex, nor one that required ultra-premium material. The designers didn't want to create a work of art that pushed the limits of engineering. Rather, they wanted a reliable workhorse that could be flown again and again, perhaps as many as a hundred times, and the company pushes the boundaries of reusable spaceflight. Blue Origin began developing the engine in 2012 for its own purposes, but in 2014 the rocket company United Launch Alliance came to them about a replacement engine for its next generation rocket, Vulcan. The company, which launches the majority of U.S. military payloads with its Atlas V rocket, needed to move on from its use of the Russian RD-180 engine as the national security community was no longer comfortable buying from Russia during a time of rising tensions. The RD-180 is a very high performance engine operating at extreme temperature and pressure. Higher pressure translates into marginally more performance, but at a high cost of development, time, money, and uncertain reusability. Our strategy is we like to choose a medium performing version of a high performance architecture, Bezos said. The RD-180 is both a high-performing version of a high-performance architecture, and that's a very challenging engine to develop, and it really complexifies everything. With a lower pressure, you can still get very high performance. As a result of its design philosophy, Bezos said the BE-4 engines should cost about 30 to 40 percent less than the RD-180 engine. It should also, in theory, be more durable and capable of reuse without worrying about the failure of components due to the extreme pressures and temperatures like inside the RD-180 engine, which is flown once and then discarded. Surpass RD-180, BE-4 also has its rivals in America. Since early 2015, the BE-4 had been in competition with the AR-1 engine from the Atlas VRD-180 replacement program. While the BE-4 is a liquefied natural gas engine, or LNG, the AR-10, like the RD-180, is a kerosene-fueled engine, and this is the strength of BE-4. LNG enables autogenous tank pressurization, eliminating the need for costly and complex pressurization systems like helium, which is increasingly scarce in supply. The low-cost availability of LNG enables an extended engine development test program. Further, the gaseous properties of the LNG simplify decontamination of the engine prior to vehicle installation, while improving operability and safe operation for reuse. ULA switching to the AR-1 would require significant delays and money on part of the ULA. This point also had been made by ULA executives who clarified the BE-4 is likely to cost 40% less than the AR-1, as well as benefit from Bezos' capacity to make split-second investment decisions on behalf of BE-4 and has already demonstrated his determination to see it through. Whereas the AR-1, in contrast, depends mainly on U.S. government backing, meaning Aerojet Rocketdyne has many phone numbers to dial in to win support. First of all, this BE-4 is considered a giant beast of the rocket engine industry, a big game changer for Jeff Bezos. However, don't forget that Elon's Raptor 2 engine is also in another league. Blue Origin engineers have been tossing and turning day and night to solve BE-4's problems for more than half a decade. Meanwhile, SpaceX has not only ramped up engine production to a dizzying speed, but also built many other upgraded versions. The Raptor 2 has already produced 247 tons of thrust during static testing. 
and engineers are confident they can hit 250 tons soon. That's a 35% increase in thrust from a smaller, lighter engine. This would allow any Raptor 2 equipped with a rocket to have dramatically increased payload. This completely stole BE-4's crown. BE-4 is designed to produce up to 244 tons of thrust, but it doesn't just stop there. Thanks to Raptor 2's simplicity, it can be relaunched within an hour. As you can imagine, this will cost an awful lot, but this is where the Raptor 2 really shines. A Raptor 2 equipped Starship is estimated to cost only 2 million per launch, BE-4 is up to 16 million. Production rate is another notable aspect. Full-scale BE-4 testing began 16 months before Raptor in October 2017, but in the following four years, only nine prototypes have been manufactured and tested. Meanwhile, as of May 2021, SpaceX is now building more than a dozen Raptors, including prototypes and flight engines, every month. At this point, SpaceX is now building at least four Raptor 2 rocket engines a week. The two engines are comparable in terms of overall power. By way of bigger comparison, the one-time propulsion leader in the U.S., Aerojet Rocketdyne, has set a goal of building four RS-25 rocket engines for NASA's Space Launch System a year. Finally, the biggest difference between the Raptor and the BE-4 is that the BE-4 has never flown. Meanwhile, SpaceX has flown many of its Starship prototypes with the Raptor. The company's planning to launch the first prototype into orbit with the 39 Raptor. Blue Origin is five years late delivering this engine to ULA, and the problem's really serious. The U.S. Space Force acquisition executive Frank Calvelli, who's been on the job for less than two months, told reporters at the Pentagon June 28th he's aware of the delays in the development of Vulcan's main engine, Blue Origin's BE-4, and that's why he decided to put ULA and Blue Origin on his travel schedule sooner rather than later. One of the first industry visits I want to make is down there to make sure they understand the importance of hitting their milestones with that engine delivery as well as with the launch, Calvelli says. Vulcan is years behind schedule due to delays in the development and testing of the BE-4 engine that powers the vehicle's first stage. ULA's CEO Tori Bruno has said the two flight engines needed for Vulcan's first flights will be delivered this summer and Vulcan should be ready to fly before the end of the year. Calvelli said he expects Vulcan's first launch in December. That's what I've been told, he says. ULA needs to start flying Vulcan and complete two commercial orbital missions successfully in order to get certified to launch U.S. military and intelligence satellites under the National Security Space Launch Program. ULA is under contract, along with SpaceX, to launch as many as 35 missions over the next five years. Having Vulcan certified as soon as possible is critical for the Defense Department. Frank Calvelli said he wants to make sure the companies understand the importance of hitting their milestones. After all, BE-4 will still be the king of engines, but only in a place without Elon Musk and SpaceX. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas down in the comments section because everyone's support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.